Hello everyone! Sharing a testimony makes me nervous. One of the things I'm afraid of is that words are prone to be exaggerated a bit when we give a testimony, whoever that would be. I'm afraid of it, so... Whenever I hear someone's testimony I shave off 10% of her story, basically. So when you hear my story today, you can shave off some seemingly overstated parts. Everybody shares a testimony about his or her salvation in this place, but I think there are many of you who already listened my story about how I was saved. If you heard it already, you could just sit back and take a break. Okay, far away. When I was six years old, I had one dream, which was to go to school at the age of seven. But my mom didn't put me in school at seven. So from seven to eight, the long waiting of the whole year was so boring and tedious. And then I went to school at the age of eight, which means I was good at everything because I was waiting for it. I studied well, played sports well because I was of strong physique. I drew well, except singing. I excelled in everything. By the time I reached the year of the third grade, I found the world dull and boring. I could do whatever as long as I decided to do. When things are boring, I happened to see a movie titled Yu Guan Sun. After seeing the movie, I got a goal. All right, becoming someone big in Korea is boring to me. My goal is to go to Japan and to take vengeance on them. That seemed worth a challenge, challenging enough to make the impossible possible thrilling. So that became my dream. I bought books to study Japanese language. That was how I spent my childhood and then I hit puberty. Questions popped up in my mind. What happens after I die? This world has existed before I was born and it will continue after I die. So what's all this? Everything is meaningless after I go away. What's the use of taking vengeance? What's the use of being rich? So this brilliant girl, I mean self-styled brilliant girl, figured the best way to live. That was to live an average life. Keep an average, do not stand out, being barely noticeable. That's the coolest way of living. That was the conclusion I made back then, so I laid aside all the things I was good at. One day, I happened to see a sign written on a wall in a neighborhood. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved, you and your household. As soon as I saw it, my eyes were opened. What an incredible fortune! If I believe in Jesus, all my family can get saved. Then I'll become a believer as a representative of my family, I guess. So I went to church. However, I couldn't find God, though I attended it for a year. So I quit. Well, I searched for him in another church because it's not fair enough to quit after only one church. But there again, I couldn't find God. So I figured I'm done with it. After a long while, as I lived without God, I happened to meet Sister Yi min -soo. That was about time one month after I got married. I listened to the DVD Bible seminar. On the first day of the seminar, the teaching of the Bible on the first day was so satisfying. All that I've been curious about were solved. There has been God living. Now I know why I was born. I could understand it all at the moment. Everything was answered. It goes without saying that I was observed into God's word afterwards. And that was how I was not saved at that time. Yeah, I couldn't get saved back then. And the next year, in 1993, as I was listening to a Bible seminar preached by Pastor Chung uh, Su Chang, I got saved. And I asked the sister Yi Min Su, I was born again. What do I do now? She answered, attend church. Well, I'm short-tempered and it was disturbing that I had to spare time to attend church. There were more urgent things I was engaged in, so I was drifted away from the fellowship. Oh, well, I'm going to go to heaven anyway. It doesn't seem important for me to attend church. I was away from the fellowship. Then I could come back again, realizing the love of Jesus Christ again after listening to the teaching of Deaconess Kim. And then it happened that I had to get an operation of my brain. After getting the brain operation, I found my husband so smart. Oh, 
Now he got so smarter than me. I was totally devastated. Sisters in my cell group fellowship who were less smart than me before got all superior to me. It was a humbling experience. I couldn't help but kneel down before God. He struck my preeminence so that I could have a proper brain, proper intellect to live a better Christian life. It was just about right to serve my husband as my head. And there's another story I cannot skip in my Christian living, which is the story how I served my mother-in-law for almost two years. I took care of her doing a back pen for her. I mean, whenever she makes number, I took care of it. And that, and that changed me a lot. That being said, when I heard that she collapsed, I prayed like this. Lord, what do you think of me? I can do this. Leave it to me. She shouldn't go away like this because I'm a daughter-in-law of her first son. It would be a shame if she passes away alone in the countryside. Thankfully, God saved a life and I brought her to my home. Since there were not many nursing homes back then, it was quite natural to take care of a sick grandma at home. After one month of caring, I saw a calendar. It felt like a year had passed, but only a month has passed. It's so hard. It's a mystery, really. I can't quite solve the riddle. A year is like a month. I mean, a, a month ha was like a year. For now, I'm living a year like a month. But at that time, I lived a month like a year. Through the time of trouble caused by my mother-in-law, I experienced such a big hardship. When I went to the fellowship, I always cried and the sisters cried with me. When I cried, they cried. One time, I prayed to God, covering myself with a blanket. At first, I talked big. I can do that. Leave it to me. I pray like that a lot, like a fool. So we began to take care of her. But now I demanded God again. Lord, where are those five children of my mother-in-law? She raised them, fed them, wiped them. And where are they now? And I have to do all these things. I'm a total stranger to her. Is it right? And God spoke to me just two words. Consider Ruth. That's right. I got nothing to say. All right. And I continued taking care of her. And yet, still it was hard. And then someone told me to read the book of Job when I felt troubled. So I began to read Job. I read it and reread it and I couldn't find the answer. As I was reading to the latter part of Job, I read slowly and carefully, but I couldn't get anything. Oh, well, God must be mischievous and he seems to like a big turnaround at the end. I don't know if it's me that liked a big turnaround or if it's God's design of great finale. Anyway, in the last verse of last chapter, he gave me an answer. So Job died old and full of age. When I saw the verse, a great peace came upon me. I said to myself, what are you? Who do you think you are? How could dare you be a judge and a creator? You could die before your mother-in-law. You are doing what you are not supposed to do. At the moment, all my troubling thoughts were gone. I could have a true peace in my heart. Still now, I have peace deep in my heart. That applied to all situations, even to a trivial matter in life. I clearly know that there is a time, a cut-off point, and when the time is given, a chance is given too. It's an opportunity that I can do something about it. What would I do with this chance? And how would I turn this chance into my everlasting reward by doing good work? Now I get to think about it on every occasion. It happens a lot, especially at home. Like when my husband doesn't flush the toilet, I say, oh, well, this is a great reward to me. When my son splashes urine, I say, my good son, very well. You are the best. <laughs> and clean it up. Basically, I'm a positive person and now I became hyper positive. I'm so thankful, so grateful that I've been trained through suffering. I can't forget it. So yes, I have this mind that suffering has its own time and runs its course 
and I've got to get the chance to do good by the end of the time. Thank you.